The M1 MacBook Air has been my go-to travel laptop since early 2021, and it has absolutely proven its value, especially when I'm on set. When looking at laptops last year, I actually went for the base model M1 MacBook Air and was warned against doing so, but I'm here to tell you if you are a filmmaker and using this laptop to travel and edit while away, even if using footage like RED 6K footage or Blackmagic RAW 6K footage, uses a DIT machine, or just use the laptop for regular computing, the base model will absolutely work for you even with only having 8GB of RAM due to how the Apple Silicon ecosystem works, especially if you run a separate desktop like I do. Now, a disclaimer, there is a big difference between being able to smoothly edit videos and then the process of rendering and exporting those videos. This laptop can absolutely do it all, but as you can imagine for the price, there will be some trade-offs. Now, if we haven't met before, my name is Jeff Hagen. I'm a filmmaker and DP based in South Florida. When I was looking to put this video together, one of the reasons I did so is because as you can see right here, I've got my red Komodo. And then as you can see here, I've got the Red Control Pro app, and it's actually giving me a live feed from my Komodo. Yeah, I'm looking, I'm moving, I'm moving. And you can see that I have full control over the Komodo from my MacBook Air. Today we are discussing why I am still loving this laptop even a year later, plus after the M1 Pro and Max have been released. Another thing is part of the reason the performance on my M1 MacBook Air is so great has to do with the thermal mod I did preventing the computer from being thermally throttled or slowing down. I'll put a link to my video on how to do this super easy hack in the card and description below as well. If you are in a similar situation to me and looking for a new computer, today I will show you why the M1 MacBook Air is or is not the best computer for you. I went and picked up a base model M1 MacBook Air last year because when I had originally purchased what is now my main camera for my video work, the Red Komodo, it needed a beefy computer to edit the files or at least something better than my old 15 inch MacBook Pro. So I got the base model M1 MacBook Air, a hardcover because this laptop gets thrown around a lot while traveling, and a super fast and powerful NVMe SSD enclosure so I can edit on the go with as big of a hard drive as I want, plus I can get close to internal hard drive speeds and be able to share the drive with multiple computers at pretty much any computer I want, not just the MacBook Air. Check out my full MacBook Air review if you're interested in making your own DIY SSD. Now, right before I got the Air, I actually got a medium spec 2020 5K iMac with an eight core i7 and eight gigabyte AMD graphics card because I wasn't even able to fully edit the file smoothly without making proxies on my old MacBook Pro. So the 2025K iMac solved those problems, being able to easily edit and render this red footage. I also occasionally need to run Windows via Bootcamp for good gaming performance. However, running Bootcamp is not supported with Apple Silicon as of right now, and there are no indications if or when this will ever be available. However, it is a desktop. So when I was on the go for a bit, I was actually using my older MacBook Pro 15 inch, which was 2013. It served me well for seven years. It was super sluggish while editing my red 6K footage, which is why I got the 2025K iMac, but it didn't solve my problem for computing on the go. I knew the specs of whatever the new Apple Silicon computers would be better. However, at the time, all the rumors pointed to the biggest upgrade in the new M1 Pro and Max laptops being the GPU performance, which helps when you're rendering and exporting if you are editing video. These M1 MacBook Airs have amazing CPU performance, but depending on the spec you get, they only have seven or eight GPU cores. So editing seemed to work great if using optimized apps like Final Cut X or DaVinci Resolve. Rendering and exporting video was a whole nother issue because it seemed to take way longer on these machines regardless of the spec. In my case, for the most part, I do my exporting and rendering on my 2025K iMac because its graphics card is one of the main reasons I purchased that desktop. The M1 MacBook Air lets me do the editing I couldn't even do before though, seemingly with whatever footage I throw at it, even with the eight gigabytes of RAM because I'm using these M1 optimized apps. I understand wanting the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pros because I used to want one computer that did everything I needed. And the way that I have my computer set up now, it ends up being equivalent actually to the cost of a decently specced out 16 inch M1 Max. So the main reason I rather use the M1 MacBook Air for travel is out of experience because I've been using the 15 inch MacBook Pros since 2008 as my main editing computers, pretty much so I can have everything on one computer. While at home, I love the screen size. Starting in 2015, I seem to always hook up the computer to an external 
external monitor in my office. Then on the road, the size and weight of the whole 15 inch MacBook started to become an issue because I really wanted something much smaller and lighter while traveling so I can bring less bags and have less stress on my back. Now compared to the Air, the CPU performance is better on the new M1 Pro and M1 Max computers, but it's nowhere near the jump as the M1 MacBook Air had received coming from its Intel predecessor. So now we're at the point where you may be asking yourself, why go for an M1 MacBook Air if the performance is better on the new M1 Pro or M1 Pro Max? So my breakdown would be this, I would still go for an M1 MacBook Air in 2022 if, First, you are in higher end production and your main goal is portability over GPU power, but you still need a computer that packs a punch to edit those high end codecs from cinema or mirrorless cameras when you're traveling on the go. Plus, you have a more powerful desktop at your home or office to do the rendering either faster or for more complex projects. Second is you are an all-in-one filmmaker or work on very small sets that require you to also DIT your camera media. Because of the two fast Thunderbolt 4 ports, transferring even from the media cards to the external SSD memory is very fast. I use this setup to transfer footage off my CFast 2.0 cards from the Komodo and Blackmagic. The computer is also fanless, so it will run completely silent. Now this is the main reason actually for the thermal throttling in this computer, and that's where the thermal pad mod would help with performance. My video on it is in the description below if you're interested in that. My Red Komodo and Pocket 6K while on the go and having fast Thunderbolt 4 speeds and fast SSDs make me being the DIT for myself possible and I don't have to bring a huge rig to do so. Also, most of the time I run the MacBook Air off of battery power because it just lasts forever. The capacity lasts around 10 to 14 real world hours if using M1 optimized apps, which is more than a full shoot day, especially if you're putting the laptop into sleep mode when you're not using it. Next, if you are strictly a DP or camera op and you don't regularly edit footage, but you need something that can do it every now and then, this would be an option. Four, if you are on a budget and the M1 MacBook Air is one of the few Apple computers in your price range, if you don't mind the longer render times, this computer will absolutely be enough. You may just have to sit around and wait a little bit longer on some of the long form content you're editing. Now here is where I would not buy the M1 MacBook Air if, number one, this is going to be your only computer and you're filming or editing footage from high-end cameras that have pretty beefy codecs all the time. Two, you do a lot of 3D work in programs like After Effects, Blender, Maya, etc. Three, you consider yourself primarily an editor over any type of camera position. Four, you need the bigger screen to edit off of or you're running a multi-monitor setup at home and so you need the ability to do so. Five, you need fast turnaround times and you need the faster render and exporting speeds. Last, you need more ports that the new MacBook Pros offer versus using a dongle on the MacBook Air. I like having the smaller laptop on the go, especially because I can fit a whole Komodo and laptop setup in a small bag like this. While at home, yes, the screen size can be small, but that's why I'm running the setup I have and really only use the M1 MacBook Air while on the go, traveling, or doing some live streaming. I know plenty of people who use the M1 MacBook Air and even the M1 Mac Mini as their primary computer since they get the performance they need and it saved them a lot of money. I hope this video was able to help you in your decision on the M1 MacBook Air and even with rumors on the horizon of an M2 MacBook Air, which I personally believe is actually going to be rebranded as the MacBook, I don't believe we're going to see as big of a performance jump in the cheaper Mac lineup like we did with this initial M1 Mac offering. Plus, I also think the new version, whenever they get released, will be more expensive than the current M1 Macs. If you need to buy one now, I absolutely would, especially with these laptops going on sale all the time for $8.99 on Amazon, or even buying a refurbished model directly from Apple for $8.49 with the same service and warranties you'll get from the brand new machines they sell. If you have any questions about the M1 MacBook Air or even how I edit with the Red Komodo, please put those in the comments below. I also have a video discussing how to set up your M1 computer in DaVinci to easily edit Red footage, so check that out in the description below as well. Please also hit that like and subscribe button to see more videos like this, and until next time, thank you for watching everybody. My name's Jeff Fagan, and I will see you in the next video.